Okay, guys. So, this is a question that comes up all the time. Like, people ask, are sprints good for fat burning? Are sprints good for muscle building? Are sprints going to hold me back from muscle building? Are sprints going to hold me back from fat burning? Is jogging at like a steady state, like going out for a jog for 20 minutes, 30 minutes, 40 minutes, is jogging and that steady state type cardiovascular work better or worse than sprints? Is jogging going to get me the results I want in terms of fat building better, faster, more effective than sprints? These are all questions we get. So I've just cranked out some sprints myself after some weights. So this is our wig and gym, so um, we've gone gate to gate, okay, so gate to gate, it's about 12 seconds per sprint and I've done it with a walk back recovery, I've done 10 reps after my weights, um, so yeah what I want to cover in this, in this quick post is I just want to cover the pros and cons of doing sprints because I think it's something that needs clearing up and I think it's our job in the industry to put out correct information that's going, going to help people you know, cl clear up questions that they might have about getting results and, and enable people to get results to a better degree. So I've wrote a few things on the whiteboard. What sprints are very, very good for is increasing what we call EPOC. So this is excess post oxygen consumption. So this is where after the training our bodies are consuming more oxygen when we work with sprints and they hence use more fuel in the process and therefore will burn more calories. This is also no, known as the afterburn or people talk about your metabolism being increased. Okay, So just before we go into this anymore, let's define what sprints are. Okay, So a sprint can mean anything. Okay guys, for the context of this post I'm mainly going to talk about running. All right. Uh, probably 80 to 90 percent of your maximum speed whatever look that looks like for you whether you are super fast at sprinting running wise or whether you're really really slow okay it's it's your effort level that counts so we're talking about um, an effort that's less than 60 seconds that's running based that's over about 80 90 percent of your top speed okay and then we're talking about having a period of recovery you're not just going to do one and then you're going to do repeat bouts so we might do five sets and i'm going to talk about a, a protocol that you guys can, can implement and plug in. At the end of this video, I'm going to give you an exact routine that you can plug in and start doing. So, the increased epoch, okay? Excess post oxygen consumption, they burn calories after you've done them in comparison with, say, going for a steady jog for 20 minutes. Okay. The second benefit I like about sprints as a, as a busy dude is that they're very, very high bang for your buck. So bang for your book means it took me 10 minutes to do 10 sets there. And the, the return on that 10 minutes is absolutely huge. Didn't have a lot of time today. Very quick warm-up. Banged out five sets of squats after warming up on here. Doing um, one set of five every one set of five reps every every two minutes, guys. Yes, yeah? so it took me 10 minutes to do five sets. I went outside, I did that in 10 minutes. So 30 minutes, that's my session done. So bang for your buck. In comparison with, say, going for a jog, where we're talking about 20, 30 minutes to, to, to get more of a benefit. Um, another really good benefit to sprints, guys, is they're very, very, very compatible with a muscle building program. Now, women that are on, we've not got any women on. Who have we got on at the minute? We've got Lee Minch, okay? We've got Mark Harrison, Scott Ogden, and Mark Jones, okay? So, in terms of women, women want to tone up. Toning up is the same as building muscle, all right? So we're going to talk about it as the same thing. It's, it's the same process that you go into mentally. So, sprints are very, very, very compatible with muscle building programs, okay? Sprints will, will complement a muscle building program. Going for a steady jog will be working against that, depending on the duration um, of time that you're going to be jogging for. Um, Sprints are useful, that's another benefit that I like, okay? So being able to have a good engine on you, good morning Dave Story, or good, e good afternoon even. So it's good to have a good engine on you, it's good to be able to endure and keep going, that's an important quality to have. But what is really important is sprints, uh, it, it, sorry, it, it's being able to have that fast, that, that immediate capacity to do a powerful, immediate amount of work. Say something happens and you need to literally sprint from, for your life, all right? Say something happens and you need to move quickly with a lot of powerful action. 
Okay, if all you ever do is aerobic style training, okay, that's steady state training and even circuit training to a degree at a certain level, you're never going to have that like boom, that ability to move. And I don't know about you, but I don't do this for, for looks, okay, that comes part of it because you get self esteem from, from feeling that you look all right or you look good. Um, afternoon, Keith. Afternoon, Dave Story. Um, but it's, not, it's good. For me, it's about being able to do work, being able to have work capacity. Um, strength transfer. So a bit similar to building, uh, helping you build and tone muscle. Sprints have got a massive transfer. You're moving at 80 to 90 to 100% of your maximum capacity over maybe a 20-second duration. Well, a set of maximum effort squats might take you three, three to five reps on doing squats or bench presses or deadlifts might take you 20 seconds, 30 seconds. So being able to have high power output, okay, in terms of sprinting, in terms of running, is going to then transfer to strength work that you're doing in, in the gym, which has then got a knock-on effect in to, to your muscle building that we've already talked about. Um, and just the last kind of, not really a benefit, but a side note is, Let's say, like Keith Gregory there, he's got a pulled calf muscle, so he wouldn't be going out and doing maximum sprints on, like, doing shuttle runs outside. So, don't forget, you can use other bits of kit, guys. The gym's an absolute shit tip from this morning's session. You'll have to excuse us. So, we could use, like, a ski erg. We could use battle rope. We could use a assault bike. We could use a Concept 2 rower. We could use a watt bike. We could hit a punch bag. We could push or pull a sled. Okay? So when we're talking about sprint, I think there's something very, very, very primal about being able to run and move because that's our natural, like, you know what I mean? We've not been, as cavemen, we've not been peddling around on one of them, okay? We've not been using a ski erg over there, have we? All right, we, 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 that ability to shift and move is very, very primal and I think that that does something inside of our DNA in terms of getting results and making us feel good about our training and having high self-esteem because we know that we're functional in that respect. Okay, but another thing, if you're not ready to do sprints yet, which I'm going to talk to you about in a minute because sprints aren't for everybody, if you're not ready to do them, then there's no reason why you can't build up to them maybe in the gym by doing some sprints on some other kit. So what's a negative association with sprints? Well, number one, the impact is higher than other types of conditioning work that you could do and therefore the risk of injury is higher. So um, when we're maxing out on a sprint for example, so I'll give you, you know, when I used to play rugby it's like probably at least one occasion, maybe two occasions I can remember where we're in training, running at top speeds and then oh, twang my hamstring and then you're out for four to six weeks. And that risk of that happening, I'm going to talk to you about how to minimise that, but the risk of that happening is higher doing a sprint than going for a jog, without a shadow of a doubt. Um, but at the same time, you could argue getting under a heavy barbell and squatting, there's injury risk with that as well. Morning, Sam. Hope you're recovering from your operation. Um, so impact is higher, obviously, sprinting. We can minimise impact by maybe doing it on grass. Um, I'm going to talk to you about another way you can minimise it in a minute, but doing it on grass or doing it if you live near the coast on sand. Um, but at the same time, that impact is going to be there. I would then flip that off and I would then balance it out with jogging. Um, afternoon, Debbie. And say that the impact over a prolonged jog is going to accumulate. So I think the seven times your body weight travels through each leg when, you, when your foot lands when you're jogging or, or when you're running. Um, that's going to impact over 30 minutes. And although you're probably not as likely to have like a one-off, boom, hamstring's gone or calf's gone you, over time, probably more likely to have some like shin splints or some type of knee ankle damage over time, possibly. Um, so that's the kind of pros and cons of sprinting. And what I want to do before I sign off is I want to give you a routine that you can do, guys, because I really, really believe in, in the power of sprints. I would start off by finding a hill that's kind of... I'm going to sound like a douchebag now because I don't know how to measure this, but... A medium, a medium incline hill, all right? Could have been more vague. So, not the steepest frigging hill you can find, but not just like a shallow hill, all right? Let's say 35 degrees, okay? So, let's find a hill that's a medium, a medium, a medium angle, all right? And we start on hills because the impact is lower. So, if you think every time you put your foot forward, so if I'm on a hill, every time my foot goes forward, all right, if it's elevated and I'm going forward and it's higher, my foot hasn't got as far to travel to the ground, has it? Yeah, so 
flat ground, your foot's going to have further to travel. Going up a hill, your foot hasn't got as far to travel, therefore the impact's lower. Also, the other thing with hill sprints is the top speed is going to be lower because you run up a frigging hill. Therefore, that minimises the risk of injury, that minimises uh, the impact. So I would always start... Okay, and I'm saying start on a hill, 90% of the time I do sprints, it's on a hill. Okay, I'll pick a hill that's between seven, uh, 50 and 75 metres. If you're not sure how long that is, in terms of time, it doesn't want to be any more than 40 seconds to run from bottom to top. Okay, so we're going to start with about a 30, 25, maybe 30 second effort to 40, 40, 40 to 45 seconds. So let's just fucking make that more simple, guys. I'm waffling. 25 seconds at minimum, 45 seconds at maximum to go from bottom to top. Okay, and in terms of recovery, what you're going to do... When you get to the top, you're going to turn around and you're going to walk halfway back. You're going to walk, not run. And then when you get to like halfway, you're going to jog back. Alright, so I'll sprint up, boom. Okay, turn around, walk halfway back, jog halfway back, get to the bottom, go again. Okay, word of warning, guys. You might not feel like you're doing a lot. You are putting a lot of force through your body. Alright, these are really, really powerful drill, you know, these, these hill sprints are powerful, okay, so start easy, the first time you do it guys, don't go frigging try and race someone, don't go with a mate and see who the fastest one is, that's a, 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 a sure fire way, if you're over the age of 30 guys, you, you or you know, late 20s, you're going to probably pull a hamstring, pull a calf muscle, just don't risk it, the first time you do it, you're just going to go up, you're going to have a bit of a jog round for five minutes, have a bit of a stretch, and I want you to do five reps, all right, no matter how frigging good you feel, you're going to pull the plug and leave it after five reps and go home. Over the next day or two, you're going to monitor how stiff and sore you are. Let's get a drink, guys. Um, you're going to monitor how stiff and sore you are, and then you're going to adjust your intensity appropriately. So sprints initially can work really well as a finisher after a weights workout. So you go and do your weights, and then you go and bang out like five hill sprints. All right. And then as you get more conditioned to doing them, you can build them up. So you can build up to maybe like 10 reps, 12 reps is pushing it. Um, you know, that, that, that's the best way to do it, guys. Start small, build it up, just like anything. The last thing you want to do is go too aggressively into it, pull a calf muscle, pull a hamstring, and then you're scared of doing it forever. Do you know what I mean? You don't have to do everything at 100 mile an hour to get the benefits from it. Um, so sprinting, guys, super powerful. Um, I'd recommend throwing them in, massive fat burner, brilliant for toning muscle, brilliant for building muscle, brilliant for complementing what you're doing in terms of your weights work, you know, if you guys are lifting weights, brilliant for, you know, complementing that in terms of getting you stronger, um, but at the same time, guys, nothing's exclusive, there's nothing wrong with going for, going for a jog, if you enjoy, you know, a lot of people enjoy going for a jog, it clears the head, there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. Don't expect to go for a run three times a week for 20, 30 minutes and get in the best shape of your life, because that won't happen. But, you know, it's the same time, it's up to you to find that balance, what works for you. All right? So, I hope you found this useful, guys. We've got a lot of good blogs on um, www.rmfitness.co.uk. And then if you go to our blog section, we've wrote quite a lot of blogs. I think there might even be one on there, on, on sprints, actually. There might be an older one. Um, so jump on there and have a read. Mark Harrison, 49, always stiff, good man. Rob Simvad, Caroline Winard, hope you're all well. So signing off now, guys, all right? Hope you found that useful.